Hi there. We're trying a different um, angle with the camera until I get in something fancier than what I'm using. And we're going to paint some little happy hibiscus today with beautiful bright colors. Um, the flowers are drawn out so that we don't have to worry about the drawing part, which is nice. And we'll use a palette of these colors. Your primaries, red, yellow, blue, plus some pretty blue, green, and some deep phthalo blue and some white. Always need some white. And we've got our brushes. I think I can get most of this done with these two brushes today. My water and my paper towel, and we're ready to paint. So we're going to start um, with the flowers this time. And then we'll go to the background, then we'll go back to the flowers. We'll do back and forth, back and forth. And for, I think this will work better because maybe I can show you what I'm doing with the plate. So I'm painting flat instead of up on an easel like I normally do. Um, these hibiscus have a lot of red and yellow and you can alter that as you see fit. You could have them all red or pink or whatever you want. But I'm going to start just by mixing some red and yellow together. And I'm using the big brush. I'll dip my brush in the water and add just a little bit of water to this paint to thin it down. Not much, just a smidge. And I'm going to focus on, oh, I'm already dripping. I'm going to focus on the curve of the petal. So I'm going to start in here and I'm going to pull out into, from the center out to the tip of the petal thinking about the direction that the flower grows. And if I go over my pencil lines, that's no big deal. In fact, they're showing through right now. I'll go ahead and come into the center of that flower. It's a little bit thin, but that's okay. This is going to be a start. We have to start somewhere, so that looks pretty messy, but it'll get there. And then we'll do the same with the second flower. We'll start in the center, kind of work out, come in behind the tip of that petal, and this one's facing us, so he doesn't have as much red showing, but he has a little. So we'll pull out, again, thinking about direction that the veins and the petals grow. And I'll work a little bit around that uh, center of the flower, the pistil stamen, whatever you call it. So now I've got a little bit of color here. Some bright orangey red. And now I'm going to take some of that red out of my brush. I'm not gonna take all of it out. I'll give it a quick rinse, wipe it off on my paper towel and then go into the yellow. I want a little bit of that red in my brush, a little bit of white. There we go. And now we're going to start on the tips of the petals and work back in. And we'll just kind of gradually blend in that red. Oops, now that got a little heavy, but that's okay. It works. So while the paint's still wet, you can get this pretty blend between the red and yellow. And if you get too much red from the wet red, just rinse your brush off a little bit. That's a little heavy for the red, so we'll dip. Wipe off a little bit. Don't need a lot of water. And go back to the white-yellow mix. And we're just gonna come in and really come around that little edge. There we go. Nah. It's doing a lot of blending with that red, wet red. So I'll smooth that direction. That's okay. Now I'll come over here and work on this little petal. Back and forth. This is our first layer. It's just to get color on the canvas. We always have to adjust. 
build it up. So I'm doing the same thing with each petal, just thinking about yellower towards the end of the petal, red, orange towards the center, and I am getting a mix, which is fine. In fact, that's what we want. So after cutting in the tip of this one, the curve, I want to brush back in with the direction the petal grows. Let's do this guy. Now that little blob of red right there is a little heavy, so let's rinse out our brush. Dry it off on the paper towel, go back to the yellow, and we'll soften that back in. Blend that red in a little more. So hopefully this makes it easier to see the paint plate. So you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Okay, so that's just a real rough base coat for our flowers. We'll stop there, we'll rinse our brush pretty well. And put in some background color. So we want some really deep earthy greens in our petals down here, darker. So let's go with a mix of the green, a little bit of red will go a long way to dull it. And we're gonna sneak a little bit of that phthalo blue in there too. A little more red maybe, because I want it to be a very dark. Now if it starts to go kind of uh, Oh, more red than green. You know you can add a little more green. The other color that's going to help with earthy greens is a little bit of yellow. So I'll stick a little yellow and that really gets me to a nice, that's a beautiful green. All right, so now just to get started we're going to block in these leaf shapes and they're hidden behind the flowers. And they're very um, loose. They don't have to be overly detailed because they're in the background. I'm just giving the idea of some little leaves. We'll come over here. Oh, I think I missed part of a petal now that I'm looking. That's okay. Cut that in. And if the, the shapes run together a little bit, that's okay because we'll pull out some definition later. So you can let this kind of run right into the leaf that we just painted, that's okay. That's enough of the green, so now we'll focus on the uh, kind of turquoisey background color. Rinsing my brush again really well. And get all the green out. So now then for that uh, sky color or turquoisey, I'll start with this turquoisey color. Add a little white. And maybe even a little more white. I think I want it to be pretty light at the top of the canvas and then gradually get darker. That's a good color. That's a good color. So that's got a lot of white, probably half and half, half white, half turquoise. You can adjust it to your liking though, of course. You can make it much lighter, much darker. You can always play with the colors and make it your own. And we usually paint the edges of the canvas. We would wrap that around so that if you didn't frame it, it would still look nice hanging on the wall. That 
Okay, so that's good for the top. Now as I come down, I want to darken it. So I'll put a little bit of that darker phthalo blue in with the turquoise. And of course, it overwhelms it very quickly, so that might have been a little heavy. That's about right, though. That's the turquoise, the phthalo blue, and maybe a hint of white. And I'm just going to sneak this in, fill in the background, not worry too much about my uh, green shapes. Like if the blue and the turqu or the the turquoise and the green mix together, that actually can be nice. Kind of soften everything in the background so it blends kind of pushes it back when it doesn't have hard edges. Sometimes I forget to slow down and enjoy the painting, so I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. Just enjoy the process of putting paint on the canvas. very therapeutic. So that's a little loose in the background, but I like that. These kind of if you can come in next to the green where it's still wet and just soften between the blue and green, that's a nice look. And of course, that's still just one layer. We have more layers to do. All right, so now I need to rinse my brush really well and think about refining uh, the petals on the flowers a little more. We're still using the big brush for all of this. You can do most of this painting with the bigger brush. It's a three-quarter inch, I think. So now I'm just wiping that off nicely. And I'll check this. It's still a little bit wet. Not much. I think I can play with it. So right now these flowers don't have a lot of depth, and I want to get a nice deep... I'll pull this over here. I want to get this shadow down inside the flower and that's going to be a mix of red and purple. So let's play with that. And I will use mostly red with a little bit of purple. I mean blue <laughs> to make purple. There we go. So that's mostly red, a hint of the phthalo blue. And that's going to make a nice shadowy red for the center of the flower. And I'm going to use the brush kind of on its edge to get started. And I'm pulling from the center out. I don't have to necessarily watch individual edges of petals at this point. I, it, it can all look like one shape. So that's a start for that. Now I'll do the other one and if it's still a little bit wet We'll rinse our brush and blend that in a little bit. If it just picks up the paint that's underneath and leaves kind of a thin layer, you may want to let it dry a little more first. Because if the acrylic is still wet, the second coat just tends to pick up the first coat and doesn't really give you the look you're going for. Okay, so I'll rinse that. And with a damp, clean brush, just kind of come back in and pull that back and forth. And that helps soften that in pulls a little bit of the dark into the lighter color. Of course, if you let it dry, you're not going to get that blend. So that's the only thing about acrylic. You have to work fairly quickly sometimes to get that nice blend. And that's not near dark enough yet. So 
Again, this is all about layers. Just takes a little time. Um, what do we want to do next? Let's see. There's a lot of blending that I want to do on the petals. And I think I want to mix a little yellow, tiny bit of red, get that orange going again. Maybe a little more red. And go back in and focus on that center part that's more orangey. Oh no, I dripped on my canvas and it picked up the paint. Once it dries, I can deal with that. The more you're aware of the direction the petals grow, the nicer this will turn out. And you can exaggerate. There's very little paint on my brush right now, so when I pull that dark color into the yellow, it doesn't completely hide the yellow. Okay, that's something. We always start with something. Now I'm rinsing again, and I can see I've missed this little edge of this petal, which is mostly in yellows, so I'll go back to my yellow-white mix. I fill that in. Maybe a little hint of orange in there wouldn't hurt. Anywhere else where I see white, I want to go ahead and make sure I've got all of these areas filled in. Oh, there's one. So at this point, hopefully we have, except for the stamen pistol thingamajiggy, we have everything painted in with one coat. Okay, one coat. Now, I think I want to add some pink. There was some pink in the flower that I was looking at as a reference. So I'll just take my red and a little white with my clean big brush, make a nice pink. And I want to pull that, I guess, about halfway in to the petal, where the red and yellow meet. That's pretty. The hibiscus come in so many colors. They're really beautiful. Some little water drops. That's the difference in painting flat. I'm not used to my brush dripping on the canvas. It's usually up. A little pink on that edge. All right, now let's go back to the yellow out here is dry and that pink will just be a little bit wet. So let's rinse, get most of the red out and let's do some more yellow. So let's take white and yellow and just a smidge of red, just a tint. Now we're going to look again at the edges of our petals. And when we pull back into the pink that we just did, we want to do that pretty gently so you get a nice fade from one to the other. And 
And this is just, it just takes time and practice. And if you get too much of one color, you can always go back and add the other. I think that's why I like painting because there's so much opportunity to adjust, change. Just because you have one layer doesn't mean that's where you have to end. You can keep painting. starting to take shape just going back and forth right along these edges is fun oops I might have pulled well no is it too much yellow I guess that's subjective how much yellow do you want in your flower do you want more orange do you want more pink you get to decide All right, now I think I'll go back to the center of the flower and really darken that purple in. It's nice and dry, I think, yeah. And I'm gonna go to the smaller brush now, a little flat, and I'll start with my red purple again. Red blue to make purple is what I meant to say. And I've got a nice kind of burgundy color so I'll just start again at the very center of our little flower and just focus on pulling out sometimes it starts to pick up the paint when you brush too much so it's like put a coat down go on Move, move along to a different part of the canvas and then you can come back when it dries and add another layer. Over brushing with acrylic doesn't really work. I'm going to darken in right below that stamen. I should really know that by now because every time I paint flowers I question that and and then I don't go figure it out. Okay, so that's starting to pick up the second coat. So I'll just leave that alone. Move on. Move back to this guy. And it, again, is starting to pick up my layer of dark. So that's one coat. Call that good. And then there are some shadows along the outer edges of the petals here where they curl. And we want to get that in there. So we'll use the small brush again. And again, that purple mix is probably good. Maybe add a little more red to it. But you do want it to have some blue. So this is in here, in that area. And we're going to think about, this is a little curve. On this petal we see some lovely little curves and we'll soften these back in with extra layers where else oh in the shadows or the petals there will be a shadow behind the petal as it overlaps another petal so we can put one there we can put one here and I need to have paint on my brush or it doesn't work. And there'd be one maybe under here. This is going to help give it a little more depth. 
behind the stamen. A little water because that's a little dry. I don't want it too thin. I just added a lot more blue to that. It got really purple. Okay, let's put some shadow back here. And we'll go to the second flower and look for shadows. So this petal would have a little shadow behind it. And right back here, behind this guy. Okay, those look really hard edged right now, but we'll blend. We'll get them to fade back in. We'll do one right about here. Something like that. Okay, so if this is still wet, I can't play with that. Okay, that means we will Still use the small brush and we'll focus on putting a little more light into the tips of the petals. And that's gonna be a yellow-white mix. Very pale yellow. And there'd be some extra light right along here. And here. You don't want to outline the whole petal though, that doesn't look as natural. You want to pick spots and you you almost you might even need to just go almost white to really get it to show up. Or we can go darker. That's the other option with the rest of the petal. You have to have contrast. You can either go lighter or darker. And once you get to white, you can't go any lighter than that, so that's where you have to think about darks. So right now I'm just coming along tips of petals with that yellow-white mix. I'll probably do it more than once before I get it where I want it. This little petal was kind of folded over, so the light would fall inside the petal right here. And the other thing is the shadows that we put in are so harsh. Let's take yellow, white, with just a hint of red. Something like that. And let's soften that. Let's go back over them. They'll still show up because they're so dark, but with a lighter value on top. And you don't really need too much white in there because it'll wash it out. So now this is yellow and orange, or yellow and red. through there. It's going to have a little more light. And right here on this little leaf this, wherever your shadow is on a, a lighter area, you can afford to put a little more white in there. When it gets back down into the dark part of the flower, you don't need as much white. You'll have too light of a change in value. So now I can go back over this with just kind of red with a little yellow and white. That's starting to blend in a little bit. Let's 
Check our shadows, still wet. We can play with leaves for a minute. We'll let our flowers dry at that stage and we'll play with some leaves. All right, so we can still use big brush for this. Actually, we'll, we'll mix with the smaller brush. Okay, so let's take the small brush and we want um, a green that is a little lighter than what we started with. So we started with the green. We put a little red in it to dull it. And now we want to add yellow to lighten and warm it. Maybe even a little white since we're trying, oh, that was quite a bit of white. If you just put white, it goes kind of a minty green. If you add the yellow, it's warmer. And that was, I'm still adding, and it takes a lot of yellow because it's the lighter color. Put a little more red in there. All right, so there's a, another green. Yeah, that's a good, it's kind of an army green, I guess, which works. And I'll just come in here over some of these edges. Kind of give this a second layer. I can leave a little bit of the first coat showing through. That's where the paint or the water dripped on the canvas. And I'll come over here at this little petal. Work some of that army green in there. And then this little uh, leaf is maybe a little more forward, so we can add a little more yellow to him. So I'll take a little bit of that color I was just using and mix it about half and half with yellow. And that lightens it considerably. Still, uh, even a little white if you can't see it. There we go. That shows up, and I'm just kind of coming along here and creating a little zigzag edge on my leaf, maybe here too. Maybe a spot of light on the stem. And let's see, this guy could have maybe a little hint of yellow. If we, we can even kind of take that dull green and just fill in some of this. Maybe there's some extra greenery that's not really dull.